जय राधमाधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधमाधव कुंज बिहारी जन वल्ला गिरिवार दारी गोपी जन वल्ला गिरिवार दारी यशोदानंदन ब्रजचान रंजन यशोदानंदन ब्रजचान रंजन यमुनती रावण चरी यमुनतीर वन चरी जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राध माधव गोपी जन वल्ला गिवर गोपी जन वल्ला गिवर यशोदानंदन ब्रजचान रंजन यशोदानंदन ब्रजचान रंजन यमुनती रावण चरी यमुनती रावण चरी जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे
श्रीमद्भागवत परम से प्रवृत्ति गचर स्तोत्र शत श्री श्रीमद श्रील अभय चंद्रविंद भक्ति वेदांत स्वयं महाराज श्रील उपाद की ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय We are reading from Shrimad Bhagavatam, uh, Canto 4, uh, Chapter 12, entitled Dhruva Maharaja Goes Back to Godhead, Text 44. Maitreya Vacha Itati Bihitam Sarvam Yat Prishtoham Ihatvaya Druvasyo dama yashasash Charitam samatam satam Maitreya uvacha The great sage Maitreya said Etat this Te unto you Abhihitam described Sarvam, Sarvam everything. everything. Yet, Yet. what? what? Prishtaha, Prishtaha. Aham. Aham. I was asked. Was asked. Iha, Iha. Here. here. Tvaya, Tvaya. by you. Druvasya of Druva Maharaja. Udama, <coughs> greatly uplifting. Yashasaha, whose reputation, Charitam, character, Samatam, approved, Satam, by great devotees. The translation and purport by His Divine Grace, Shila Prabhupada Ki. The great sage Maitreya continued, My dear Vidura, Whatever you have asked from me about the great reputation and character of Dhruva Maharaja, I have explained to you in all detail. Great saintly persons and the devotees very much like to hear about Dhruva Maharaja. Purport. Srimad Bhagavatam means everything in relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Whether we hear the pastimes and activities of the Supreme Lord or we hear about the character, reputation and activities of his devotees, they are all one and the same. <coughs> now five devotees simply try to understand the pastimes of the Lord and are not very interested in hearing about the activities of his devotees. But such discrimination should not be indulged in by any real devotee. Sometimes less intelligent men try to hear about the rasa dance of Krishna and do not take care to hear about other portions of Srimad Bhagavatam, which they completely avoid. There are professional Bhagavat reciters who abruptly go to the rasa lila chapters of Srimad Bhagavatam, as if other portions of Srimad Bhagavatam were useless. This kind of discrimination and abrupt adoption of the Rasa Lila pastimes of the Lord is not approved by the Acharyas. A sincere devotee should read every chapter and every word of Srimad Bhagavatam, for the beginning verses describe that it is ripened fruit of all Vedic literature. Devotees should not try to avoid even a word of Srimad Bhagavatam. The great sage Maitreya therefore affirmed herein that the Bhagavatam is Samatam Satam, approved by great devotees. The translation of the verse again. The great, Maitreya, is, the great sage Maitreya continued, My dear Vidura, whatever you have asked from me about the great reputation and character of Dhruva Maharaja, I have explained to you in all detail. Great saintly persons and devotees very much like to hear about Dhruva Maharaja. Om Ajnanati Mirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guravinamaha 
श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्टम स्थपिता ये नूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददाति स्वापदातिक वंदेहम श्री गुरो श्रीयुतापतकमल श्रीगुरुन वैष्णव श्रीरूपम सग्रजाता सहगना रघुनता तम सजीव साद्वैत सवदूत परीजना सहित कृष्ण चैतन्यदेव श्रीराधा कृष्णपद सहगना ललिता श्री विशाखन्वितम हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीनाबंधु जगतपति गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कंचना गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषाबानु सुते देवी प्रणमे हरि प्रिय वंशकुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतितना पवनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण <coughs> so uh, today we discuss <coughs> further this uh, Dhruva pastime um, how he went back home back to Godhead <coughs> and we'll connect this also with our theme of Aparadas um, we can see how Dhruva um, Uh, what was his attitude to other people especially other devotees um, you may remember if you have heard this past time um, that he went to um, Badarik Akshram and performed different austerities and sadhana uh, and then he quickly attained perfection Actually, he was already perfect. <laughs> and uh, Vimana from spiritual world came to pick him up and take him to the spiritual world. Um, but he didn't just jump on the Vimana, as one would assume. <laughs> uh, but he wanted first to perform his spiritual activities. That means to, to chant at least 16 rounds <laughs> of, of his sadhana. Um, yes, he was so druva, we can say, so adamant that he will perform his spiritual duties. And then after he finished his, uh, his sadhana, daily sadhana, uh, he didn't boast i'm going back home back to godhead and you because there were other sages around also uh so i can bless you <laughs> that you <he'll> go also <laughs> no he went to every one of these sages and asked them for blessings uh yes before he went and then he also remembered his mother who uh, was his Vartma Padarshaka guru, who, sent, who said that uh, the great sages usually find uh, the Lord in the forest. So at the age of five, he went to the forest <laughs> to find the Lord. So yes, <clears throat> there are so many instructions in this uh, Dhruva Lila, and therefore, Here it is said, Samatam Satam, that is approved by, by great devotees. And Prabhupada translates here, uh, very much like to hear about Dhruva Maharaj, that devotees very much like, and great saintly persons and devotees very much like to hear about Dhruva Maharaj. 
and uh, that was the case also with um, Lord Chaitanya and Gadadhar Pandit. Uh, Lord Chait they they read Srimad Bhagavatam every day. Uh, so much so that uh, the copy of Bhagavatam that uh, was um, Gadadhar Pandit's uh, copy of Bhagavatam was completely washed away by the tears of love. <laughs> they, they discussed every day from Srimad Bhagavatam and, and uh, the tears from Gadadhar Pandit's eyes were falling on, on the, uh, this copy of Srimad Bhagavatam. And so many pages were un, uh, unable, it was unable, no one could be able to read them. And when uh, Srinivas Acharya came to uh, to Gadadhar Pandit to to learn Bhagavatam from him, uh, Gadadhar sent him back to Bengal to get a new copy because his copy was unusable. <laughs> it was so washed away by tears. And they, especially Lord Chaitanya, loved to hear two pastimes from Gadadhar. And the first one was of Dhruva Maharaj, and the second one was Prahlad Maharaj. And when uh, um, the other pandit finished one uh, lila, Lord Chaitanya said, uh, Tell me again, <laughs> tell me again. And so uh, we can see that the past of Dhruva is, is very long. Uh, and and also of Prahlad is very uh, long pastimes. Both pastimes are very long in Srimad Bhagavatam. But Lord Chaitanya wanted to hear this 20 times. <laughs> the same story again and again and again. Yes. So <clears throat> it's very important what Prabhupada here says that uh, mm, Neophyte devotees only uh, focus on Krishna, not on devotees uh, and other things. We discussed yesterday. We discussed yesterday uh, tadiya aparadas. It means aparadas uh, against the things that are connected with Krishna, and we spoke about. <coughs> um, this Damodar Lila when Yashoda mm, bound Krishna uh, and there is one important aspect we didn't mention and uh, it is um, that this mm, we should understand uh, with these um, offenses that Krishna is a person is very simple. And we said that um, by chanting the holy name, all the apparats, other apparats, are vanquished. But we also stressed that if we do, we commit these other apparats, like seva apparats, tadiya apparats, and so on, uh, then it becomes nama apparat. And we can give... Uh, simple and illustrative example of this for example um, if you love someone and you do something unknowingly that this is displeasing for this person and he loves you also and uh, you have very loving relationship and you call him or her and and, uh, and have loving exchanges um, Another person will not consider this offense because you did it unknowingly uh, to be something serious, isn't it? Uh, but if you know that something is displeasing and then you try to call him and pacify, <laughs> this is of course displeasing, isn't it? Uh, how can be? Uh, we be um, pacified by, by, by such a behavior. 
And if we don't know, um, or this question was raised, uh, should we just focus on the holy name, chanting the holy name, or we should know this kind of offenses? They are there in Shastra just for our benefit, to know them and uh, not to commit them because they are displeasing for, for the person we try to love. <coughs> Isn't it? So it's really important to know these different offenses and try to guard against them very much. Otherwise, if we are careless, uh, this is certainly displeasing for, for the loving person. Yes. And uh, because of different type of offenses, we cannot establish loving relationship. And that's against our interest. <laughs> we would like to have loving relationship with the Lord. Everyone wants to have loving relationship with the Lord. Every devotee, at least. <laughs> yes. So, it's important to know these offenses. Um, and that we can avoid them. That we know uh, what is pleasing and what is displeasing to the Lord. So today, uh, before we start, we uh, said yesterday that maybe we can start with questions because there were many questions yesterday and we abruptly stopped. <laughs> uh, is there any question in your mind? Any of you? Some doubt? Yes. Uh, yesterday you mentioned that only by devotion and service can one attain to such a And in, I never studied this, so I was wondering, like, is it not that if one meditates a lot and even in an impersonal way or uh, follows some kind of process, will there not be also <coughs> some uh, uh, increase of such a uh, Of course, we should know that uh, these gunas. Mm, material modes of, uh, of nature, they are uh, not present um, in pure form in anything. They are, um, every time they are mixed. Um, so, everyone has his own mixture of these gunas. <laughs> Unique mixture. And <coughs> um, Krishna says in 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 ninth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, "Aham hi sarva yaganam bhokta cha prabhuiva cha, na tu mama bijananti tatva na That uh, I'm the enjoyer of everything, of of aham uh, hi sarva yaganam of all sacrifices." I'm their enjoyer and the Lord. And those who don't worship me directly, they will definitely fall down. That means what is fall down is influence of lower modes. Nothing else actually is a fall down. Uh, and then we become a uh, prey of these lower modes. So, uh, we, as we also said yesterday, we can artificially rise ourselves to, to some higher uh, sattva, but uh, as Krishna also explains in 14th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, that uh, there are always uh, struggle between, uh, among these three modes. For which modes to be to be uh, superior to other two. So usually the modes of ignorance and passion are very strong in this world. So no one who is not a devotee <coughs> can rise above these two. Yes, only by pure devotional service we can rise above them. So. Uh, therefore, we should know what is pure devotional service and what is mixed devotional service. Because mixed devotional service means that we uh, try to, to remain un under the influence of the modes of material nature. 
So this, this should be clear, what is pure and what is mixed. Yes. So we should practice pure devotional service, not mixed devotional service. Is this okay? Okay, anything else? Uh, so we can now uh, speak about Seva Paradas. And we said that there are many. <laughs> so uh, we should know them. But also, in many cases, we cannot follow them completely uh, or guard against them completely. Because first, there are so many. And sometimes uh, there is such a situation that uh, we cannot... Uh, guard against them completely. So uh, we should stick to uh, what is uh, prescribed by our acharyas, our our gurus. Basically, most important. Um, so the first seva parada is entering the Lord's temple in a vehicle or while wearing shoes. <laughs> this is well known. Uh, apparat will not go into detail uh, in with every apparat <coughs> because then we can hear it for another month <laughs> or more <laughs> uh, because as, as I said the uh, different lists of these apparats and this list of 32 apparats and list of 64 apparats so yes we should be careful so um, this is well known everyone knows that uh, he should uh, come to the temple barefoot um, or not in a uh, in a palanquin <laughs> if someone is a king he, he should go to the temple uh, barefoot uh, barefoot <laughs> not on in the palanquin there is an exception, of course, if one is uh, handicapped and invalid in, in this wheelchair, he can be brought in a wheelchair <laughs> or put on some chair or something. Uh, so there is some uh, concession there. Hare Krishna. Um, then the next offense not celebrating the Lord's birthday and other pastimes. This is very important to understand. If Lord has a birthday party, <laughs> or for example, <clears throat> you have a birthday party and you invite your friends. And if your friends uh, don't show up, you feel sad, <laughs> isn't it? You invite people to come to celebrate birthday and then people don't respond so, so that you get the feeling that they don't care about you isn't it <laughs> so if Lord has a birthday we should celebrate everyone should celebrate we should take day off if possible <laughs> to celebrate for the Lord's pleasure yes so it's important uh, to celebrate and uh, to give gifts also to the Lord, <laughs> not uh, just to uh, everyone else but the Lord. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> of course, if we have particular service to perform, for example, in, in the kitchen, or this is, then we are servants of the Lord. Uh, in this role and Lord is very pleased also if we celebrate his birthday as, as his servant <laughs> not just uh, to be present on the birthday party but to to serve all the devotees Lord is even more pleased then. <laughs> yes uh, then the next offense is not offering obeisance when coming before the deity uh, this is one uh, of the offenses um, so that you just walk in and, and do other things and not uh, offer obeisance or we can um, see something um, 
often that uh, devotees uh, pay obeisance with one hand. For example, uh, if you have a japa in uh, japa mala in other hand, uh, this is also an offense. Or we can also see uh, such uh, bogus uh, uh, obeisance like touching the ground and <laughs> have you seen like this? <laughs> they consider this an, uh, bowing down, but it's not. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes. Or or like this. You can it <coughs> back like this that you uh, keep it up. <laughs> yes. So we should not do it uh, in a half way. We should uh, completely um offer obeisance to the deity. Then worshipping the deity with an unclean body or while in an impure state. Yes. So we should bathe before worshipping the deities. Uh, and then the next is very interesting. Strolling or pacing before the deity. For example, a devotee is chant japa and walking up and down before the deity. <laughs> This is considered an offense because the Lord is not in the focus, your focus. Yes. Uh, and basically why are we walking up and down? Because you're kind of bored. <laughs> uh, and uh, the Lord is not attractive enough for you. <laughs> Uh, to uh, strolling or pacing before the deity. It means they walk up and down and not focus on the deity. Yes. <clears throat> then is sitting before the deity while holding up one's knees with one's forearms. <laughs> yes, it's... Uh, Mm, and sometimes it's difficult to to sit properly, so one uh, hold is holding knees. Uh, then the next is lying down before the deity. Yes, we have also seen this. Have you seen that someone is lying down before the deity? Yes, yeah. you're fortunate if you haven't. <laughs> uh, eating before the deity. Many times, Grihastas um, have altar with the deities and uh, don't close the deities when they eat. According to, to uh, Shastra, this is an offense. So, um, because when we eat, we focus on our satisfaction. Of course, a devotee is focused on on honoring prasad, uh, <laughs> or at least we should be focused on honoring prasad. But uh, then again, the deity is not in, in, in focus. It's something else. It's deity's mercy, but uh, we can focus on deity's mercy after we honor properly the deity. <laughs> yes. Uh, telling lies before the deity. Um, this is a very strong one. And we can remember from Chittanda Charitamrita, uh, there was a Shakshi Gopal story. Um, then uh, there was an old Brahmana and a young Brahmana. And um, young Brahmana, they were both on, on the pilgrimage. And young Brahmana uh, took very good care of this old Brahmana. And this old Brahmana was so satisfied with him that he offered his daughter to, uh, for marriage to this young Brahmana. But it happened that this young Brahmana was very poor. 
and this old brahmana was very rich and he said uh, this young brahmana said that mm, you cannot do this you know uh, because every everyone in your family will uh, oppose this and so you cannot fulfill your promise so it's better not to promise such a thing <laughs> But uh, old Brahmana was very adamant that, yes, I want to give you my daughter for marriage. And then uh, young Brahmana said, okay, then go before the Gopal deity uh, and, and promise before Gopal. <laughs> uh, because no one dares to tell lies in in at least in Vedic culture, it was like this <laughs> before the deities. So, um, and it was the uh, custom. If there was something um, not easily resolved, who who is telling the truth and, and who is not, they were brought before the deities, and no one dared to tell lies. <laughs> yes. So <clears throat> we shouldn't tell lies before the deities. We should be very careful. Speaking loudly before the deity. Yes. It's also an offense. Yeah. We have now loud speakers. <laughs> so <laughs> I should be careful. <laughs> but because it's Krishna Kata is uh, okay. But loud speaking uh, before the deity is not uh, beneficial. It's an offense. Conversing privately before the deity. So this is also an offense to speak something not connected to the worship of the deities is also an offense. Crying before the deity. Of course if we cry of ecstasy it's <laughs> not such a thing but if we um, are sad and cry before the deity it's an offense because we should be in a jolly mood or a happy mood in front of the deities yes. uh, because we uh, if if someone is sad and uh, then we also become sad isn't it if especially if we care for this person um, so if we come in this sad mood uh, to the deity will make Krishna sad because he loves us <laughs> isn't it <clears throat> but our purpose is not that Krishna would be sad because we are devotees our purpose is to make Krishna happy so we should come in a happy mood before the deity <clears throat> not to burden uh, the, the deity who we love with our sadness. Yes. But when we are in such a deranged state of mind, and then we go to the deity to take shelter, <coughs> we might cry also. <coughs> yes, it's true uh, that uh, in, if we are uh, extremely disturbed and so on, we can only take shelter of, of the Lord. Um, but mm, we shouldn't bother the Lord too much. Yes, so uh, <clears throat> we should have this mentality. I want to please the Lord. I want to please the Lord. Um, this is quite different mood than uh, other religions have. Other religions have this mentality. Uh, the Lord is my father and uh, and mother. <laughs> And and uh, so I approach with all my problems all the time. Uh, of course, there is a, an aspect of devotional service um, to reveal your mind before the deities. <laughs> in in sixty four angas of devotional service, one is to reveal your mind. But um, as a devotee, our purpose is, is uh, to uh, make Krishna happy not to burden him uh, with our our problems so yes of course 
we should um, mm, solve our problems with Krishna's help uh, and not in any other way uh, but basically with proper um, attitude like tate no kampam su samikshamano punjana i vatma kritam pipaka khritva papu pirvi dadan namaste jivita mukti pate sataya bhak that we understand that all these troubles that i have are just the consequence of my misdeeds <laughs> and i glorify um uh, and 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 um worship the lord with all my mind heart and soul and my body um so i don't bother him about um the proper consequences that i undergo <laughs> you understand the point yes we are responsible for our misdeeds and um we shouldn't cry too much before the deity about this he should just glorify the lord and 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 realize that all these suffering that i uh, experience that there krishna's mercy so we can come and thank you krishna for for all these inconveniences <laughs> that i experience thank you very much and also queen kunti prayed like this please send me more miseries <laughs> yes please Um yes prayer is one of the uh, angas of devotional service but depends uh, what for we pray but this is like very different to just crying to <clears throat> we can pray to to be to be pure devotee or um, uh, pray to to never forget him understand um it's not really devotional if you pray for um, daily bread for example or pray for um to be safe from uh, f from miseries um yes please i, I remember one lecture pure power said one should go in front of the deity and say my dear sir i'm suffering like this Yes. Um yes, we should know that uh, first we should uh, learn to uh, to to go to Krishna for uh, to solve our problems, not in some to to seek some material solution. So <clears throat> but Prabhupada also uh, describes in in many places that we should uh, be humble and take all these inconveniences as krishna's mercy uh, yes uh, definitely um krishna should be in the center of our life in whatever way and form <laughs> if you feel joy or sad or disturbed or anything krishna should be in the center of our life yes uh, so we should know um what is pleasing to krishna and what's not pleasing to krishna therefore all these offenses are described um that we take uh, that we uh, assume proper attitude <clears throat> then um quarreling before the deity mm, this is also a grave offense if we call uh before the deity being charitable to someone before the deity <laughs> so <laughs> this is very interesting isn't it to be charitable one would think that this is very beneficial to be charitable <laughs> but uh, if someone else is in the focus of your uh, of your attention uh, again uh, this is an offense yes please my property to you it is like two thieves who are making gifts to each other with, uh, <laughs> with what they stole yes. in front of the person to whom it belongs 
Yes, it's very interesting uh, thought. Yes, you take from uh, from the person, and I give it to you. <laughs> what do you want? Um, when guests come and uh, uh, donate money there, this is like something different, right? Uh, uh, where in the, here, here? In, in the temple, while there is some uh, lecture or something else, and they are about to leave them with some money there. Here, yeah. yes, this is for the deity, mm -hmm. and this is beneficial. Yes, uh, we use our money, our our energy, our attention for the pleasure of the deity. It's our so-called uh, so-called our <laughs> yes. Uh, <clears throat> okay, behaving or speaking cruelly towards common people, so we should be. Gentlemen, as Prabhupada put it, that uh, one will know who is my disciple uh, because he's a gentleman, he said Prabhupada. So we should not be cruel to anyone or speaking cruelly. Even uh, though sometimes Prabhupada spoke very strongly, but he didn't spoke strongly before um, other people. He spoke strongly for the devotees that they would understand what is uh, truth and what is not. <coughs> Serving the deity while covered with a wool, fur, or a uh, down blanket. I don't know what's down blanket. Anyone knows? It's feathers, I think. Down and in German you say down and something like feathers. Oh. Down jacket or something. It's very valuable. Uh, sorry? It's very precious. Uh huh. Okay, so you should know. Covered with the wool. This is interesting because wool is usually considered pure. <laughs> Fur or down blanket. Criticizing others before the deity. Yes, we shouldn't criticize. And praising others before the deity. <laughs> uh, using foul language before the deity. Passing air before the deity. Uh, financial fraud this is organizing a festival or offering worship at a lower cost or with fewer ingredients than one is able to provide so if we uh, are able to provide something uh, valuable for the deity but we uh, I'm, we are miserly <laughs> and uh, we don't want to spend so much money on the deity. <laughs> this is an offense. Yes. Uh, taking items that have not been offered to the deity for oneself. And uh, the next one, not offering fruits and grains to the deity when they are fresh. So, um, this is also an offense to, 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 to eat something that is not uh, that not been offered to the Lord and that means uh, that we eat some uh, in some restaurant or even vegetarian but uh, it's not prepared by devotees or we buy food in the store prepared food and uh, uh, we eat it Yes. Um, Krishna says in ninth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Patram Pushpam Palam Toyam, Yome Bhakti Aprayachati, Tadaham Bhakti Upahatam, Ashnami Prayatatmana. That um, I accept whatever you give with love and devotion, even if it's, uh, it's a leaf or a flower or a fruit or a little water. But uh, in this verse, Krishna mentions bhakti two times. Bhakti mm. aprayachati and bhakti upahartam. That means that it's prepared with love and offered with love. So no devote, no non-devotee can prepare something with love for Krishna. <laughs> so we should be very careful not to uh, consume uh, food prepared by non-devotees. Yeah. And to offer it to Krishna is also an offense. <laughs> to offer the food 
prepared by non devotees. Yes. So we should be careful about this. Yes. What about those um, supplements? Is this considered? I, I still got some supplements from uh, home and I use them sometimes and uh, I offer them, but uh, they are not prepared by, the, it's just by machinery, I guess. Yes. Mm. These supplements, are, I don't like them very much. So maybe my judgment will not be unbiased. <laughs> uh, but uh, yes, everything should be prepared with love for Krishna. Just imagine um, who's preparing food for Krishna. Radharani and sometimes Rohini also, um, uh, Balaram's mother. So do you think Shumati Radharani would offer to Krishna, give to Krishna, something prepared by non-devotees? Never. <laughs> she would never give it, such a thing to Krishna. So if we give... To Krishna, we said that uh, devotees are servants of Radharani. And now we bring to Radharani something that is not offerable to Krishna, to offer to Krishna. <laughs> it's an offense. Yes. So we should be careful. We should know that Krishna is a person. Uh, we, we tend to forget this. At, uh, as long as we are sadhakas, we tend to forget this and we think it's a, some kind of a mechanical process. <laughs> but Krishna is a person, so don't offer to Krishna what's not prepared with love for him. As Radharani wouldn't offer him such a, per such a food. So why should we? We should rather fast. Yes. Sometimes just bring Uh, to, to the temple? To the temple, yes. yes this is offered uh, for the Lord's pleasure. This is bhakti. Um, we can assume uh, they are prepared also with love. If they prepare themselves. Uh, yeah, well, when, it's not pre when it's just bought, I mean. When it's bought sweets in some plastic. Uh-huh. Bought from the, the shop? Uh, bought from some shop. Uh -huh. Yes, there are different standards. But um, we should strive for the best. <laughs> yes. Because we, we are striving for the best. We are here to, because we are striving for the best, isn't it? We would all love to develop pure love for Krishna. Is there anyone who has different uh, goal here? You have different uh, aspirations in your life than develop pure love for Krishna? So we should behave in such a way uh, that is most pleasing to Krishna. Yes. Um, <clears throat> giving the best part of collected ingredients to others and offering the remains to the deity. <laughs> yes. Uh, sitting with one's back to the deity. Yes, this is also very known. Um, offering obeisance to others before the deity. Uh, this is a tricky one. Um, there are few things that you're damned if you do it or damned if you don't. <laughs> For example, if you don't offer obeisance to your spiritual master, it's an offense. But if you offer obeisance before the deity it's also an offense <laughs> so <laughs> in both way it's an offense uh, so it's best to offer obeisance before your spiritual master <laughs> yes so we do this every day no? offering obeisances to Srila Prabhupada before the deity yes yes but we should do it <laughs> understand because uh, his our connection to Krishna. If we don't offer obeisance to Srila Prabhupada, 
it would be again an offense. Yes. Spiritual master is that one personality which one can offer obeisances in front of the Buddha. Sorry? The spiritual master is that one personality to whom one can offer obeisances even in front of the Buddha. Oh, yes. So that's what I always heard. I, I, I don't have any reference for this, so, but I heard that. Maybe the senior is. Yes. <coughs> okay. Um. And when we enter the temple, we also offer obeisance to the devo devotees, to all the devotees. So yes, because they're pleasing to, uh, pleasing to the Lord, they're um, his dear, dear ones. So, but we should be careful, uh, not uh, just uh, offering obeisance to, um, to each other, for example, um, before the deities and so on. Also, mean offering obeisances to others in the entrance, for example, of the building, not of the temple room. Or is this also in front of the deity and so on? No, 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 just in front of if the altar is opened. Yes. Because if the altar is closed, then Krishna has his private pastimes. Yes. So, the view of Nasim Hadith is, is like this, and if we do it here, is that okay? Or <laughs> <laughs> Maybe our Pujari can explain this. Well, we offer uh, obeisances to the spiritual master, first of all, because he, through him we approach the Lord. Because yes. We worship Shiva Prabhupada because he is the Acharya, and the, when the deity is open, when we offer Guru Puja, then the, then the, uh, the deity is usually open, and we make obeisances, full, flat, Dandavat, Everything, yes. Course. Yes. But I think that's not. It's not. Um, it's not an offense. And um, offering uh, obeisances to the devotees. I think this is all. This is all um, relevant in one sense, but one can see it's also confusing, because sometimes this uh, rules and regulations they contra contradict each other. Yes, I, expe I explained this. Yes. <laughs> instruction. I said we should not follow rules and regulations just because of, of following them because we should understand what's the what's the meaning yes the exactly so we, I think that's a, we should take this in consideration yes uh, so uh, therefore i'm uh, stressing this that krishna is a person <clears throat> that we don't do just something uh, mm, because it's it's written like this so we offer obeisance, of course, to Srila Prabhupada and our our Guru, because also it says Sakshat Hari Master Shastra. <laughs> guru is uh, Sakshat Hari. He is directly Krishna, actually. Uh, not is this Guru Tattva is very special Tattva. Uh, he, of course, is Jiva Tattva, but. Uh, Krishna is 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 uh, manifesting his mercy and power through uh, through Guru, so uh, it's directly Krishna is uh, um, reciprocating with us through through Guru. Yes, uh, and uh, even though um, here it is said that we shouldn't offer obeisance to anyone uh, before the deity, uh, whenever we offer any obeisance. We should know that we offer obeisance also to to Paramatma in, in the heart of uh, this living entity. Yes. What if we have service in the temple room and we have to keep going in and out of the temple room? Do we still need to offer obeisances every time? Um, yes. If we go in and out, we offer obeisance every time. Good. Um, remaining quiet and not offering praise, obeisance, and so on before Sri Gurudev. <laughs> this is also an offense. <laughs> uh, so we should praise our Gurudev, <laughs> not just be quiet. 
praising oneself before uh, Sri Gurudev or before the deity and criticizing the demigods. All these are considering offenses. Yes, so um, <clears throat> we should be very careful not to commit them. Uh, okay, are there any questions? Yes. Um, I said that, uh, <coughs> of course, uh, if, and these are tears for the Lord, the beneficial. But if there are tears because of our um, false ego is hurt, <laughs> understand the difference? <coughs> then it's an offense. But if we cry for Krishna, this crying is beneficial. Uh, so yes, please cry for Krishna, not for uh, because of your material problems. Okay. Um, yes, better if the deity is opened. Um, yes. The, the deity in the in the Japa time never is open. Yes. So can we? So do we still leave the temple? No, but um, then during the day, many times the altar is opened, and the devotees come in the temple in and chant before the deity. And chanting before the deity is good. Um, very powerful, but if we uh, pacing up and down, this is not good. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, tears of ecstasy is something which you get out of love to Krishna, right? Yes. But what is crying for Krishna? Crying for Krishna is um, mm, is to be extremely eager to develop love for Krishna. But uh, but you consider yourself completely insignificant and and uh, and helpless, um, and and you cry, uh, Krishna, please help me <coughs> to to love you, Hare Krishna. Yes. What about criticizing demigods? Because in the scriptures, we hear this all the time. Like we should be like the faults of if they have them, they can. Um, it is explained that uh, even these um, extremely elevated personalities um, have still material faults, and that we shouldn't uh, we shouldn't pray for their position or anything like this. But we should know that they are devotees of the Lord. They are maybe not pure devotees of the Lord. Um, but still, they are Lord's devotees and, and part of his garment, but, uh, this universal garment. So we shouldn't, we shouldn't criticize the, uh, the Lord's establishment. <laughs> Understand? This is Lord's establishment. He, for example, Indra is his prime minister. <laughs> And you criticize the uh, Lord's establishment, actually, universal establishment. So this is an offense for the Lord. Uh, you, you, you think you can do better than the Lord. Yes. Um, when, according to this question, when uh, some devotee is doing something not good for Krishna, you have you have uh, said um, you kind of answered this yesterday, where you said that we should not criticize, but go to the person and say this is not good uh, to do this. Um, 
or in going to the um, superior and telling what we uh, think or, or saw. And what about this for instance, when the demigod is not doing, doing very good devotional service? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we should uh, we, we don't have perception of this. How can you perceive if Indra is doing a good job now or not? Well, he did not sometimes in the chastity. Yes, there are many uh, instances and stories about this. Um, but uh, uh, it's especially meant for us uh, to be... Um, and, uh, and to be very aware of, uh, for example, pride or different material desires, N uh, that we can recognize our uh, our faults in our heart. They are mentioned with these purposes. Um, of course, um, if something comes into Bhagavatam, it's very important for us <laughs> to understand. Um, so, uh, we should. Uh, take instruction from these stories, not to criticize. Yes, this is important uh, mood. Yes, please. Yeah. Coming to my mind is that when we speak about those sections which deal with those topics, then the speaker has to be very careful. Actually. Yes, the speaker shouldn't deride uh, Indra, for example. <laughs> Even though we can see that Indra is. Uh, acting very fool foolishly. Uh, for example, in this, uh, in the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, first he uh, sends this great deluge over, uh, over Vrindavan and trying to kill all Rajavasis, actually, and destroy Vrindavan and Krishna and, and cows and everything. And uh, then he was very sorry and came to Krishna and prayed for forgiveness and so on. And then, just a few moments later, for, from Lord Indra's perspective, uh, when Krishna was in Dwaraka, he went to, <coughs> uh, to serve Indra, uh, uh, actually, he, uh, because uh, Aditi was... Uh, um, Narakasura stole... Uh, umbrella uh, and 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 uh, other things from the demigods, um, they couldn't get it themselves. So Krishna helped them to get them back, <laughs> and uh, he came with uh, Satyabhama um, to the heavenly planets and took one parijata tree for Satyabhama's pleasure. And again, Indra went mad and fought against Krishna <laughs> just after a few moments when he uh, um, begged for forgiveness. <laughs> so it's very interesting. But we shouldn't uh, criticize because everything has its purpose and he was so elevated, we can say, that he was facing Krishna face to face. Yes. Uh, so, but we should take instruction not to fall prey to such lower modes. Yes, and that even the post of Indra is not safe from lower modes. It's also important instruction for us. Okay, anything else? Yes, please. Yes, these stories uh, very much show the power of devotional service. Mm. Uh, it is said <coughs> in in second uh, canto of uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, Akamak Sarvakamava Moksha Kamodardi Tivrena Bhakti Yogina Yajita Purusham Param. That um, maybe we are without any material desire, akama, 
Or maybe we have all kinds of material desires, sarva karma. Or maybe we desire liberation, moksha karma. But one who is udharadihi, who is intelligent, will worship the Lord with um, intense devotional service. Tivrena bhakti yogi, tivra bhakti, intense bhakti. And this is the example of Maharaj Dhruva. He worshipped, uh, even though he was Sarvakava, Kama, we can say, he had all types of material uh, desires. He wanted to have a kingdom greater than his grand great grandfather, that means Brahma. <laughs> <laughs> He wanted to have kingdom greater than the universe. <laughs> but he approached <clears throat> the Lord with Tivra Bhakti. So much so that uh, he stopped the breathing of the whole universe <laughs> with his uh, extremely intense Bhakti, according to the instruction of his spiritual master. Yes. So he followed uh, the process of bhakti and then he uh, very staunchly and with um, intense devotional service and therefore he um, received pure bhakti. Lord's mercy and pure bhakti. And, and uh, Prahlad is example of, uh, of, of extremely strong faith in, in, in Lord's mercy and protection and, uh, and, and fearlessness. He was completely fearless also. Although uh, it is said that uh, Hranya Kashipu, his father, he just lifted his eyebrows and all the universe trembled in fear. <laughs> but uh, Prahlad came to his father and said, uh, you shouldn't be foolish <laughs> and uh, and try to enjoy in your way. You should go to Vrindavan and worship Krishna. <laughs> and Krishna was the most deadly enemy of his father. But he was he had the guts to tell his father to tell his father <laughs> you should worship Krishna. You shouldn't uh, go against him, you should worship him. <laughs> and uh, no one can achieve anything uh, without taking a uh, bath in the, the, the dust of the lotus feet of the devotees of Krishna. <laughs> so, uh, so these two stories were extremely dear to uh, uh, to Lord Chaitanya <laughs> because they show how powerful is devotional service yes mm. Hare Krishna yes um, you said that uh, this um, desire of um, of Dhruva Maharaj were uh, Sarva Kama uh, to me it just feels like he want, he had an intense desire for justice and that's why this um, desire for an even bigger kingdom than, than that. Mm, yes, justice. His ego was hurt, actually. Well, but it's uh, a sign of kshatriya to have ego, no? Um, mm, yes, it is. Mm, uh, but uh, devotees are not considered to be one of these varnas. Kshatriyas, Brahmanas, Vaishas, or Shudras. In fact, it's an offense <laughs> to, uh, to designate uh, Vaishnava according to these material designations. Vaishnava is beyond these material designations. Understand? So <clears throat> his attitude was material. He wanted, um, he wanted revenge, actually. And therefore, he performed penances for this purpose uh, to get Lord's darshan, to uh, get material power from him and material benefits from him. So, this is Sarvakama. 
and actually proper understanding uh, is that uh, this world is a world of justice we don't want justice this is the world of justice we live in the world of justice the spiritual world is not the world of justice it's a world of love of mercy mercy doesn't mean justice <laughs> mercy is to give to, to receive something that we don't deserve and we cannot deserve bhakti it's a heituki it's without cause it's causeless mercy we cannot do anything to deserve bhakti. Yes, it's just sheer mercy. So we want to go out of the world of justice <laughs> to the world of, of mercy and love. <coughs> Understand? So if we want justice, that means that we want to stay in the material world. Yes. Materially motivation. Yes. And Guru Maharaj has a, as you said, a pure material motivation. Yes. And he had darshan uh, of, uh, of um, Vishnu. Why did Vishnu give him darshan for this motivation? Because we mentioned that uh, the effect of <coughs> uh, apparatus, of, of offense, is crookedness but he was very straightforward no crookedness in his heart mm. then how can we how can one find oneself crookedness uh, this crookedness means ulterior, mo ulterior motive um, so um, we want to sit on two chairs simultaneously <laughs> understand uh, we want um, Krishna and we want material enjoyments at the same time and uh, Lord Jesus said that uh, you can only have one master otherwise uh, you will um, serve one and despise the other understand so, yes, we should, pur therefore, we should purify our heart. This is the process of purification. Uh, because we have so many motives, impure motives, in our life. Um, but, uh, and therefore, it's, it's also an offense to the holy name. And we'll discuss this uh, next time. Um, to keep material desires even though we have heard so many things about this <laughs> and offenses against the holy name nothing can be uh, rectified them nothing can rectify them mm. Hare Krishna yeah. <coughs> Thank you. should we stop here? thank you very much for your attention Gantaraj Shmat Bhagavatam ki jai, Shri Prabhupada ki jai, Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki jai, Nitai Gaur Pramanandi Hari Gaur.